Yes, 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 yes. Hey guys, Gerald Peters. Something's weighing on me. You know, sometimes I rant, I get these things that get on my mind, and I just, I just have to get them out. Um, one of the things that I have zero tolerance for, I don't get too caught up in politics. Sometimes people think I lean right. That's just my natural self. I'm a bootstrap kind of guy. I believe in the power of the individual to rise up, regardless of age or race or financial situation, especially in the world that we live in today. It's never been easier to be a woman or to, to, to be anybody, to be a minority, to be anybody in this day and age. It's never been easier to be poor. You have air conditioning, most people. Now I get it. Now listen, you're always going to have people at the bottom and you're always going to have these disgustingly rich people <laughs> that we want to be at the top. That's just the way society is ordered and it's okay. The, you know, so you're going to have people on the left, you're going to have people on the right. Advice from me to you, spend more time worried about getting rich than worrying about politics on both the right and the left. You can waste a lot of valuable time, mental energy, and effort pursuing politics, arguing with people. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family. And that is the exact opposite way of how to make money. Money's made through people. All of the money that you want is in the pockets, purses, wallets, and checkbooks and credit cards of other people. Learning to talk to and influence other people is one of the greatest skills that you can acquire to building wealth. You want to get rich? Learn to sell shit, man. Period. Any moment spent arguing with people about politics, I've done it, you've done it, we all do it. It's a complete waste of time. And it's actually time that you could have been making money that you could have actually helped the damn cause you're complaining for. So, but, so I don't mind people that, I, some of my best friends are Democrats. And yeah, maybe we have a few beers and we joke and we talk and we get on to each other. But it ain't worth losing friends over. And as we get closer to this political election, you're going to have people on either side. And they're going to try to divide you. They're going to try to divide you by race. They're going to try to divide you by gender. And they're definitely going to try to divide you by financial class. Don't listen to any of that bullshit. Any message that's trying to divide people is an evil message. I don't care who's putting it out, the right or the left. People are your greatest asset befriending people show mercy show grace be kind to people open doors for people instead of being mad if if you live in the ghetto and you've had a bad experience and with white people open a door for a white person like that's how you this is this is the message of like gandhi and jesus and martin luther king this fight this violent message that we some people put out on both the left the right and it, it it, it, it is a bad message because it goes against the universal principles of building wealth and making friends. It's not how it works. I prescribed to this. I had a guy once, or I get it a lot. People say, oh, you sound like a preacher. I'll take that. I'm a preacher of prosperity, a minister of good news, a merchant. So, yeah, okay, I'll take that. I'm a little bit of a preacher, and maybe you need to, if you have ears to hear, you open your eyes and you listen. That wealth is about friendships and about networks and about the people you know. And if you have a message that splits people, divides people, your message is evil. It's just the way it is, even if the intent is good. So as we go forward here, I think you're going to see things get a little crazy. Don't lose friends over that shit. And think, how does this help me make money? How is what this person says make money? But one thing drives me more crazy than anything is socialists. I actually despise socialists because socialism is evil. Now, if you're a socialist, I'm sorry. It's evil. You, it's about feeding caged tigers. It's about stealing the dignity from other people. See, what people don't understand, you know what your secret power is? Is when you're downtrodden. You know what your secret power is? Is when you're in a minority wherever you live. You know what your secret power is? Is when your gender's underpaid. That's your secret power. It's not that you're given something, it's that you can take something. That's your secret power. See, your mess is your message. The shit you have in your life right now that's your problem, all of your problems is what gives you power.
It's not what's handed to you. So when you go around taking from other people, what well, you know what that's about? See, one of the things that drive me crazy about being a socialist and why I think socialist is, socialism is evil is because they have, a, un, they have a, 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 a limited mindset. They think money's limited. There's only so much money in the world. And if Elon Musk or some other billionaire makes a whole bunch that somehow they took it from someone else and that they're evil and they're hoarding it. Let me explain something to you. Wealth is unlimited. See this house? When I bought my house, I paid $68,000. You know how much money this house has generated? There's my office. Between insurance and, you know, the trend, I mean, what? Six, seven, eight people have owned my house before I bought it. I put in this swimming pool. Think of all of the money that this house has generated. Money is unlimited. One house can generate millions of dollars over a hundred year period. It's not static. It's not a single amount. It's not if I make a dollar, the dollar comes from you. The money is unlimited. You can create it out of your fucking mind. You just think up an idea and you go into the marketplace and you can sell a $20 widget. And if everyone in the world buys your $20, you didn't steal anything. You gave back to the world, and so you're rewarded. This is how life works. It's about value creation. And so the problem with socialism is they don't create any value. They steal from the value creators. And then they take their stolen goods and they distribute it to other people, stealing their dignity because they think they know what's best for you. It's an elitist mindset of we'll take care of you. You don't want to get caught up in that. Let me help you with something. You'd rather be fucking poor than have someone take care of you because then at least you have your dignity and at least you have the ability to go out and go into the world and find something, kill it and bring it home. See, the moment you start letting other people feed you, what happens, that lion can no longer hunt. You're a lion, you're a king and you're a queen and heavy's the head that wears the crown and this stuff gets hard. And so be careful of people who come in sheep's clothing. They come as if they want to help you. They want to come into the flock and make your life better. But the truth is they just come, they just steal from other people because they don't have any ideas of their own. They can't create nothing. It's just take, 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 take from other people. And when you take from other people, you're just a thief. And that's why I hate socialism. I hate it, man. It's about, it's about keeping everybody common. It's about the average guy just staying poor. The core central theme of this is that everyone is average and everyone should have something. Truth is, you don't deserve shit. Nobody does. You got everything you deserved when you were born and you're gonna take everything with you when you die that you deserve, nothing. Everything in the middle, it's about the value creation you bring to the world. It's about the friendships you make. I've made a lot of good friends on Instagram. I began giving away this book right here. You don't have to die broke. This book is free. I'm already rich. I'm not the richest guy in the world, but I haven't had a job in 21 years. I live okay. You know, it's not the ghetto, right? I live okay. I own 15 rental properties. 11 of them are paid for. Money just comes in. I own a portfolio of dividend stocks. You know how all that started? One house, one stock. And then I made a decision, and I talk about it in this book, that every day I would try to get a little bit richer. That's it, that's simple. I don't want shit from you I didn't earn. And I wanted to create value. And I knew that the principle, Jesus says, that it's better to give than to receive. Well, it seems like to me in order to give, you have to have it. And so it seems to me that the universe is set up in such a way that if, if you go into the universe, trying to provide value to other people, trying to provide, yeah, let's just stick with value. You're trying to give, your product makes their life better, your service improves their life, your service saves them time, then you'll be rewarded. Simple as that. And I began to keep, teach the idea of getting the buckets right. About you know, your income is the well, and then you have the bucket of necessities, the bucket of savings, and the bucket of investing. And that's what I teach in the book. And as I began to go in life and began to do this, and I, I had a job. I used to be a prison guard. The most I ever made at a job was $12.50 an hour. And then I started a lawn care business. See, Jim Rohn 
said something that stuck in my head. Wages are fine and wages are honorable. Wages are how you pay your bills and you should, you know, everyone starts with wages. Sometimes I meet kids and they want to go straight, in, straight into owning a business and it's like, you don't know shit about running a business. You don't know anything about being anywhere on time. You haven't put in any reps yet. You know, I, I you know, I'm a, I teach people to trade and I have a book on trading. I run a trading club and and one of the things I have to explain to them, listen, you have no expectation to come into here that you're going to be profitable. You got to put in time. The shit we're doing is about building a professional strat. Like you're trying to build an actual business trading. It's going to take time. It's part of the process, the learning curve. You don't have the right that you're just going to start a business and that first business works. It's probably going to be the ninth business. Go read the autobiographies of, of all of the great people that you look up to, that you respect. That shit didn't come easy. Shit was a struggle. It's a 10 year struggle and then you're an overnight success. That's how it works. And in that, no one gave them anything, but people gave them everything. See, all of the money that Elon Musk has made came from other people. And he didn't take it from them. Money's not unlimited. The money they made, they can make back. See, that's the beautiful thing about real estate. Somebody pays rent, guess what? Next month, I get money again. I could spend all that money. I could just blow it. And guess what? Next month, money comes in again. It's unlimited. It just keeps coming and keeps coming. It's not limited by me doing work. That's what I teach in here. You have to begin to make money that has nothing to do with you getting up in the morning and going to work. But you have to bring all this in together. Like you have to lose any thoughts you have of socialism, that money's unlimited, that shit's unfair, that people like me can't get ahead, or that my race or my sex or this or that, that there's anything holding you back. If you have any of that shit in your mind, you will stay poor. Stay poor. I grew up in a trailer park. Family in prison, drug users, not all of them, but a lot of them. There's a lot of reasons I would have been fucked up. There's a lot of reasons that I should be broke. I didn't go to college. I don't have a degree. You know what I do have? This. God gave me a mind. And then I began to take all of this and began to build this strategy. And I began to live under what I call the 10 pillars of success. Pillar number one, how you think is everything. Meaning it all starts with this. The Bible says that a faith of a grain of mustard seed can move a mountain. What does that mean? It means your mind. And then I stumbled on books like The Science of Getting Rich. And The Science of Getting Rich says thoughts that you hold in formless substance, you can literally manifest in life. And that thinking is the hardest thing you can do. It's harder than framing a house or putting on a roof, just holding thought. It means taking your ideas. The Christians call it praying. It means the shit you hold in your mind. You can't let it go. You ever see a kid that gets interested in skateboarding? They can't shake it. They end up with 10 skateboards, skateboard magazines, skateboard video games. Why? Because they're manifesting that. It's all they can think about. And that's how you manifest things. Pillar number two is decide upon your true dreams and goals. Not what someone else wants you to do. Not what society says you should do. Some of you guys have uh, uh, college debt and you didn't even want to go to college. Let that sink in. They strapped you with debt. You didn't even want to fucking go. Don't let that.